<laughs> he said he need to get up on his Twitter. Look, guys, when we come back, we got that heard that, and guess what? We got a special guest that's going to join us. Me and my, my dude in the building. We ain't going to tell y'all who he is. We ain't going to tell y'all who he is. Don't say nothing yet, bro. Don't say nothing yet. Please don't say nothing yet. <laughs> when we come back, we got a, come a, back. a special in-studio guest. This is your girl, Amanda Sapp from the Amanda Sapp Show. The new Amazing 102.5 FM, your dude with Duke and Station. Got that boy comedian, Rose, man. That's in the right deal, then. We'll be right back. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Down this is your girl, Amanda Sapp from the Amanda Sapp Show. The new Amazing 102.5 FM, your dude with Duke and Station. Mm -hmm. Got that boy comedian, Rose, man, in the building. Pew, 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 pew. Down in the deal. And we got a special guest. We got a special guest today. Uh, he is going to join us on our second call. Y'all heard that? Would uh -oh. you please, would you please introduce yourself, sir? Uh-oh, here you come. My name is Willie Ma. Uh, Willie D, <laughs> 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 y'all. Hey, got that boy Willie D in the building. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 I like what you do, I like how you do it, and I like the way you present your information, sir. We already know how much you have to do. You on your heels. <laughs> I knew you couldn't wait to say that. She tried to cut me off. She tried to cut me off on it. She got her heels off. She don't wear heels unless she gets somebody special in the building. And you know what? It's it's worth it's worth going through the the struggle today. I guess so. Willie D is in the building, guys. He's gonna just just talk with us today. Tell us a little bit about what he's got going on, how he's moving in the city, how he's moving outside of the city, and how other people can be a part of his movement. You want other people a part of your movement, right, Willie D? Mm. I want, I'm on soldiers. Mm. Uh, that's all that matters to me is soldiers, people that have the, a common objective. Mm. We don't have to agree about everything, but we just have to have that common objective, and that's moving forward, being progressive. I'm mm -hmm. good with that. I'm with that. Yeah. I'm with that. I'm with that. And I think Grossman is too. Always, what Willie doing is always positive, man. Willie's, man, come on, man. Okay, well, man. you know what? I'm going to have Willie. Be a part of our segment called. You he y'all heard that? Yeah. Which y'all heard that? Come on, give it to me. <laughs> what y'all heard that? We talk about things that are happening in the city, outside of the city, in the world. And we just want to let y'all know. Did you hear that? Do you know that? Give us some comments. We want your feedback, all that good stuff. So when I say y'all heard that, you say what you heard. And you have to say it at the same time in your head, if you're in your car. If you're out in your car, you can say it out loud. But in the building, we're going to say it simultaneously. When I say y'all heard that, you say what you heard. Here we go. Y'all heard that? What you heard? There you go. That boy Willie just jumped right on it. And we're going to get right into it. The Source magazine remembers the Trayvon Martin tragedy, which was seven years ago. Is that crazy? Wow. Uh, it kind of feels like that happened yesterday. I guess you know that saying, um, remember, remember, mm -hmm. remember. And they made cert certain to make sure that this is something that we don't forget. So seven years ago on this date during the NBA All-Star Game, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin was shot and killed by self-appointed neighborhood watch person George Zimmerman in his father's neighborhood of Sanford, Florida, outside of Orlando. Martin was only carrying a can of Arizona iced tea and a pack of Skittles. After Martin's death and Zimmerman's acquittal, an epidemic of young black males dying at the hands of law enforcement and citizens alike hit the streets of America, such as Jordan Davis, Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, Michael Brown, a Kai girl and a host of others in which almost no one was held responsible for their deaths. Mm. Willie D, I remember, I think, I remember a video that you did regarding George Zimmerman. What is your take on this? Understanding that this particular case was seven years ago. What do you have to say about this? One of the greatest travesties in life is justice denied. Mm. So, I mean, I, I, I didn't expect to talk about this. I'm sorry, but, I but it's just a touchy subject. Well, I know it is, man, and I, but you know, I'll speak on it because, I mean, we're here now. I'm just really, really still like injured by this whole mm -hmm. situation because when you have a situation like that where somebody go out and take a life and they're not held accountable, what is the incentive to stop them from taking another life? What is the incentive to stop somebody else from copycatting mm. their actions. So there's little to none, it's no, no, no incentive. We can't count on people just being morally correct uh, because we know that there are a lot of crazy people 
in our society. Mm. Some people ain't got no home training. You know, some mm. people were really raised by wolves. Right. And mm. so they're not fit to be in, you know, to live among the civilized. But here we are, and they're roaming around this city and cities all across America every single day. We have to come in contact with these people. And they're not just the boogeyman next door neighbor who peeps out of the window. They, they work at the schools. They're in law enforcement. They are, you know, the coaches. They're the priests, the pastors. You know, they, they're, they're everywhere. They're the Boy Scout uh, leaders. You know, they, they, they're the people the in position. They're the presidents of major corporations. You know, they're, they're everywhere. And we have a lot of evil people in the society. And when, and it, and it's too many variables that that are considered for a person to be punished. You know, how old was, was the person? You know, what's the ethnicity? What's the gender? What's the age? How much press is the thing getting? All these questions. You know, how much money does mm-hmm. the person have? Mm-hmm. You know, all of these variables, and this is why American society is just so. I was going to say flawed, but flawed is not a strong enough word. But it's just, it's just messed up. And so people are not being held accountable. And what's crazy is that a lot of people who are first to say that others should be held accountable when they find themselves in that same position, they try to do everything they can to escape the hands of justice. Donald, Donald Trump is a perfect example. Donald Trump, his whole presidency was stolen. I mean, he, he hijacked the American people. Right to get into the Oval Office. And he still has yet to be held accountable for his actions. You know, he should be thrown out on his head. Out of somebody, the whole country should just go roll up on uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and just rush the White House and drag him up out of there and, and boot him in the ass. You no, know, they not. Like, like really, like yeah. he needs to go. He has to, he should be out. You know, and that's, that's a big problem because that's not going to happen in America, you know, because Americans have been conditioned to be afraid. We're conditioned to be afraid of our public servants. We're, we're afraid of the politicians. We're afraid of people that are in law enforcement. You know, we're afraid of people that are in authority. We're afraid of principals at the school. We're, we're afraid of the instructors, the coaches. All of these people that work for the people have more authority than the people. Something is wrong with that. Oh, okay. Amanda, so I want to no, no. Come on, Amanda. <laughs> because it was going to make me go into something else uh-huh. uh, in regards to holding people accountable. Right. Understanding that this situation here with Trayvon Martin was seven years ago, and 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 I think George Emerson has experienced quite a few uh, incidences since this day. You know, people were um, trying to attack him, and you know, saying that you know they were going to get him. Just all this bad stuff has happened to him since, but it's still not enough. So what would be enough for George Zimmerman? Well, I, I, like, I tried, to, to, I tried to call him to the square on some civilized stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like you how know, to I, fix it. Well, I tried to call him to the square. You know, he called out DMX. He wanted to box DMX no at a charity event. Well, not a charity event, but like, I guess they tried to get paid. Yeah. Right. So I called him out. I had my people contact his people, and I, mm-hmm. and I challenged him to Were a boxing match. Were you seriously did yeah, this? Yeah. So we challenged, we challenged him to a boxing match and the coward wouldn't even respond yeah. because he know what time it is. See, that's what bullies do. Cowards and bullies, they pick on the weak or they pick on the perceived weak. I'm not saying DMX is weak by no example, but he felt like because DMX probably didn't have a, a boxing background or whatever, that DMX would be an easy target or whatever. For whatever reason, he tried to go <laughs> at DMX. I'm like, fight me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Fight me, because I can guarantee you, if we'd have gotten the ring, I would have got, gotten justice for the ancestors. I would have beat that boy. I would have killed him. I would have literally killed him. I wouldn't have been happy without killing him in the ring. Mm-hmm. And I've never entered the ring with trying to kill another human being. But I would have tried to kill him for the ancestors. I mean, every blow would have been like, I'm literally trying to knock his head off his shoulders. Off his body. Yeah, I'm trying to get him up out of that because this dude, you know, and, and again, going back to the, what is the incentive for a person is not being held accountable right. for their actions and their misconduct. And so you saw what George Zimmerman did 
you saw that smirk on his face when, yeah. he, when he when he was acquitted. Right. And ever since then, he's been waving his his acquittal in the face of Trayvon's parents and the American public and and, and justice. Period. So, you know, are you saying what is you know, what? steps should be taken to yeah, hold like him what's, accountable yeah, or what's what? good enough to say okay justice has been served for, 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 for uh for, zimmerman yes oh he needs to die okay yeah i mean really I have mean, you ever stopped, felt yeah. this strongly about anyone before yes i have hmm. all my enemies how many enemies do you i got have? a few I got a few, but look, listen. What That's I'm saying. Why are we going live? Yeah, listen, listen. Why are we gonna go live with that? We don't listen, need to go live. I was asking, but anyway. Listen, 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 what, listen what I'm saying. Listen, listen to what That's I'm a saying. Strong feeling, though. Yeah. It listen, is. listen to what I'm saying. See, uh, as a people, we're very, very forgiving, and yeah. this has caused us great, a great amount of pain, you know, through throughout history, and you know, we're also we're very loving people, mm -hmm. but we don't know when it's time to not be loving. In fact, I'll take that back. I think it's quite possible to always be loving, but then <coughs> protect your own. I think, I can, I I think protecting your own, yeah. protecting your own, protecting your community, making sure that your community is safe, is part of being loving. And when there are exterior forces that come into your community, or even interior forces that come into your community okay. and bring harm to your community, you must be willing to take any step necessary to get them out, to root them out. It doesn't matter if it's your, 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 your brother, your father, your uncle. It doesn't matter if it's the pastor of the church. If he brings harm into the community, he got to go. And we got to get used to that concept. We got to get used to rooting out the evil in our community, both exterior, exterior and in, 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 internal. Right. We got we to... Gotta, you know, external and internal. We have to get rid of those those forces that that hurt our community. We gotta get. We gotta be okay with that. Mm -hmm. And 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 I think a lot of us, you know, we 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 we're afraid to. Well, you know, I believe and I love and I. Oh, I fight. Oh, but I ain't gonna do. I ain't gonna go all. I ain't doing all that. No, I'm doing all of that to protect mine. <laughs> I'm gonna do whatever. Got. A lot of people I'm gonna don't do whatever do I gotta do because they appear. But here's the deal, man. To think, think about what I'm saying. Think about this. Mm -hmm. America has never taken death off the table when they've had an enemy, no. including its citizens. Depending on what you do, they will give you the death penalty, right? And they will execute you. They will take okay. it out. They got people. They got hit squads to go out. And do what they got to get done. They got people who sign up at the prisons to be an executioner. That is that person's job. And they get a check from the government. A you. government check. Yeah. This is my... This, what, right. what, what is your profession? I am an executioner. Right. Okay. And okay, and who's hiring you? The government. You, know, yeah. you got... Look, man. He, he, he's hired to pull the switch. Look, man. Look. Inject, look. The, inject the needle. Look. Inject that sauce in you. Look, the only time death, or uh, only time murder is not acceptable is when it's not ordained by the government. If the government, the government only punish you when they, when they don't, when they don't give out the instructions when you, like if, as long as you sign up for it, you can go kill as many people as you want in, in the military. Even when you're wrong, you can just kill people. You can go kill women and children. It ain't got nothing to do with the struggle. You can accidentally kill people. You want to do. You'll, you'll never be brought to justice. You can go out and kill cartel members and stuff in Mexico. You can kill people in Guatemala. You can kill people any way you want to kill people as long as it's at the behest of the U.S. government. But the minute you do it to, to protect yourself or, you do, or the minute you do it out of your own interest, out of self-interest, then it's a problem. And people are like listening to me right now going, Willie D is crazy. No, that me. sounds I'm, I'm wild. Asking that asking sounds me. crazy. That's crazy, man. So, this so do you remind me of, uh, okay, so Monique and Steve Harvey had a conversation, right? Right. And in his conversation, he was saying that this is not, uh, he was, they were talking about the Netflix thing. But anyway, he was saying this is not a black thing, it's not a white thing, it's a money thing. And one of the statements he included, uh, the comments that he included in the statement was, you have to be mindful of knowing who you are, 
and there's a way to go about everything. So knowing that this is a, you know, like you said, a government situation, unless it's government, then you can kill. There are ways that you have to go about certain things, in my mind. Well, there so, is ways that you should go about certain things, but, uh, but I never take advice from criminals. Never. Oh, are we saying? Never. Are we saying that? Never. Is never will I ever take advice from a coon. That's like taking advice from your oppressor or your enemy. Why would you take advice from is, somebody? Is that, am I taking who advice or am I disagreeing? No, no, no. no. If, if he says, if he, did say he, he gave Monique and it, he gave Monique advice. If you're accepting that right. advice, yeah, you're taking advice from him. Like it's like taking advice from him about women. Why would you take advice from a man who's been divorced three times? He has been divorced. He don't know what he's doing. He don't know what he's doing. He Somebody thought he, he knew because the book sold he very well. He don't know what he's doing. He know he well. Steve has mastered the art of spotting a mark. He knows how to find weak people, people that will fall for anything. He's good at that. Right. You know, he's good at deception. Right. He's very, very good at that. So, you know, that's how he's able to get over. Okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna listen to somebody. I would ride with Monique. I would ride if I had Even to go. If, she's wrong. if I had to go to what she's not wrong. How is, no, how is, how is being me. wrong? How, how can you be wrong if you stand for what you believe in? Stand for what you believe. See, this is a problem with America. A lot of people in America are, are try to go along to get along, and mm -hmm. they just wanna, you know, it's so many people in America would love to just be like, say what they thinking. They would love to just tell their boss, you messed over me, you skipped me for that promotion, and you were wrong, and I've been working at this company for all this time, and you treat me like this, you know, I'll slap the hell out you. You know, yeah. suck my, you know, they want to <laughs> say it. You know, they would like to say that, but Monique <laughs> said it. Mo Monique, Monique said, said it, and that was a problem. Monique said it, yeah. It, Monique said it, yeah, it was a problem for other people. It wasn't a problem for Monique. It, because is, it, not, it because, is a problem for no, her because she's still battling. This is years it's, ago. It's, it's not a problem. You, you know why I say like it's not a problem, Monique? Because you do what makes you sleep good at night. Sure. Monique sleeps good very well at night. I know Monique. She sleeps very well at night. She's good. Mm -hmm. She's good. She sleeps well at night. How many people can say the same thing? Right. How many people can say that I live my life the way I want to live it? I say what I, I feel, if I feel like within my rights. Monique is not a malicious person. If you know Mon Mon Monique, she's not a malicious person. She tries to get along with people. She loves mm -hmm. people. She's, mm -hmm. she's a people lover. She, does, yeah. she loves people. But I if agree. she feels that she's been violated, if she feels like she's wrong, she's going to let you know. She's going to go in on you. So you and Steve Harvey deserves to be going in on he, he's already been ran through anyway, so he used to it already. So so that's the kind of dude he is. Steve Harvey been out it a long time ago. This dude is a snake. He's kicked people to the curb that's been with him forever. You don't worry about people that's been on his time. And say, hey, I'm not I worried about none of that because I stand on I stand on two. I'm, when I die, they're gonna say that's a man in the ground, that's a man in that casket. They ain't gonna say that's a sucker, a chunk. They ain't gonna say none of that. They're gonna say that's a man. They may not agree with what I say, but they're gonna say that's a man right there. And see, that's the problem in America. You got too many people running around here trying to go along. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that it's okay to just say whatever you want or whatever you feel just because that's what you want or that's what you feel just to be malicious to say it out of spite. I'm not right. saying that. I don't, I don't, I don't move that All way. All I'm saying I don't is move that you way. have to be tactful in your move. You got to uh, think about yeah. what you're doing before you do it. I don't yeah. think there's anything I think, wrong I think she that. thought about it because that's what, you, that's what you're missing. She thought about right. it before she did it and she did it anyway. Right. Just like just like Steve thought about cooning before he did it. <laughs> he, he thought about it. And he said, you know what? It's worth it. It's worth for me. You know, me to, it's said, worth uh, for me to get out here and cuckoo. Cool. <laughs> it's worth it. Let me go ahead and do it. Because I'm going to get paid. Russ, do you agree? How much money do you? How much money you need before you stand on two and be your, become a man, be your own man? How much money do you need? What do you need? What's your, what's your payoff? What, what what do you need? A hundred thousand a year? What do you need? A million a year? You need ten million, twenty million, hundred million? What's your number before you become a man and stand on two? And how can you tell your children to stand for something if you stand for nothing? Come on, man. You gonna have Steve Harvey calling up here? That ain't with Steve Harvey. Don't want none of this. We got Willie D in the house. We got Willie D in the house, y'all. I don't know if y'all was expecting. Right, we gonna take a water break. Yeah. <laughs> I need a water break. <laughs> All right, look, we got Willie D in the building, y'all. We ain't right. even finished with y'all heard that, but when we come back, we got more of it. That's right, y'all. We gonna let Willie D do it, baby. For real, I'm just giving you the list. And uh, right now, we need the fan in here. <laughs> this is your girl Amanda Sapp from the Amanda Sapp Show on the New Year's and 2.5. You trying to ball it? Hey. <laughs>
We don't slow them down. Yeah, hit it with some of these jokes. I can't. Stop. If you hit it with this here, oh, yeah, you might well just uh, shut up, let him go, because he gone. <laughs> that, 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 dude, that dude, Steve, is not a good person. That's what people don't understand. People, see, Steve has mastered the art, like I said, of, 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 of finding a mark. I know that dude. You know what I'm saying? I remember him. He was one of the early critics of hip hop. He was one of the dudes. Yeah. You know, like when when you're when you're an elder, I was with five years. I when, when, you, when you're an elder, you. when, when you're an elder, and you're talking to the youth, if you want to reach the youth, you don't talk at them. You talk to them. You talk with them. You listen to their points. You listen to what they have to say, mm -hmm. and you consider that hey, you know, they just may be right. Just because they're young, don't mean they're they're wrong. You can learn from a baby. You can mm -hmm. learn something from a baby. It's too many people, too many elders who think they know every damn thing. As soon as a young person start talking, they don't they, they close their ears. They have nothing. They have nothing but criticism and and and, and, and resentment. You know, they, because or stay in your place and all of that type of stuff. And then so they wonder why a lot of the youth are disrespectful. You know, so if you want to reach the youth, you come at them like human beings. That used when I was growing up. That was a commercial called Kids of People Too. I know you remember it. So it was Kids of People Too. Kids are people too, man. So you you gotta you gotta everybody wants their everybody wants their opinions, their views to be validated. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to feel validated. And when you take that away from somebody, they're gonna be resentful about it. And they're not gonna be respectful, they're not gonna be warm to you when it, when they, when they address you. And they shouldn't be, you know. Uh that the days are gone when that type of stuff is just automatic. You gotta give something to get something, you gotta give respect to get respect. Mm -hmm. And if you don't respect these youngsters, you can't expect them to respect you. All That's of the true. youngsters respect me. Yeah, now. Because off the rip, I respect them. This generation the now, gate. they demand respect. You know? So, I mean, you know, so 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 it's like it's, it's like a lot of these cats, man, they, they just don't get it. They, especially the ones who act like their asses were never young before. It's these cats that feel like they never made any mistakes before. Okay, these kids are making mistakes, but they're just making mistakes differently from the way you make them. <laughs> You know? Let's do Robert Kraft and then that one. Alright, cool. He's like, I just want to go to Boston Market. I just want to go to Boston Market. Let's do Boston Market and then Robert. No, no, we do Robert. Go ahead. No, you do Boston Market. No, no, because this, I'm pretty sure he can go in on this one. So we do Boston oh, Market and yeah, then. Yeah, then we just go in and then we shut it down. What's happening with Boston Market? What's my God? I'm in here with Willie D, baby. Yeah. You call on the phone? Yeah. yeah. You got to get Willie D to talk about anything he got. He working on. I would like to. Nah, nah, I ain't letting him know nothing. Come on, man. <laughs> I ain't got to tell him nothing. Show, I said, hey, write down your three uh, things. Uh, I'm just going to give you one thing you got going on. I'm trying to give a press day. Write down I'll give you one thing. All right, cool. You just give up. You like to just drop it. He's like, nah, this is going to go with the flow. What? All right, 30 seconds. No. <laughs> I know you do. I know it's coming. As soon as it comes out, I'm going to get it. <laughs> All right, he just gonna give us one thing he got going on. That's cool. That's right, bro. Mm -hmm. Twenty seconds. Keep it humble. Shoot my shot. I fly. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. This is your baby man, Seth from the Man Section. The new, amazing, 102.5 FM, your do good through good station. Got that boy, comedian, girl, in the building. What's up, girl? I'm in the building, baby. And we got that boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the What are you saying? We, we, got, we got Willie D in the yeah, building, y'all. Come on, man. And he has joined us on our segment called Y'all Heard That. And we heard a lot of him. In case you all didn't know. We're not with a deep back on you. Heard we do need to bring just to do the, the yeah. high topic. And he's interesting. He's always welcome. Um, but we were talking about the Trayvon Martin case and holding people accountable and all this good stuff. Real quick, um, I know we talk about Jesse Smollett a lot because he is the headlining Man, news I right now. And we, I know, right? And then we were talking about holding people accountable. So there, there is talks that he um, hoaxed his attack. Willie D, do you believe if he is lying that he should be held accountable uh, uh, in the judicial system and also publicly as far as in, uh, the public? Like, does he owe us an apology? 
out of it. Yeah, well, he lying. Definitely lying. You think he's lying? No, I don't think. I know he's lying. He's saying he's holding. He's Look, saying man, he's lying. I'm, I'm from the streets. Okay. And and, and, I, and so I, I know if, if I want to commit a crime, I know how to commit a crime. And that ain't how you commit a crime. <laughs> how you do it? If, if you want to, if you want to commit, <laughs> and, and I'm very familiar with with races in America. We got some of the best races in the world. Mm -hmm. We our races are really deplorable, planning, calculating, dirty, low down, scandalous, bully type, opportunistic racist. So they're not going to miss a chance to catch a black dude by himself and just, oh, we finna kill him, but, you know, we're going to let him escape with an abrasion under his eye. They got the right. rope. They got the clothes. They got, they got oh, chlorine. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they, they, they got, yeah, they got, yeah. they got bleach. They got the, the rope. They got masks. They, they going to beat him up and all he got away with was an abrasion. No, these, we got professional races, man. Long. They gonna they gonna they gonna they gonna get a return on their investment. But besides that, nobody, and I mean absolutely none of our races in America is gonna go out on the coldest not recorded night <laughs> not in, in Chicago history <laughs> at right. two o'clock AM yeah, right. looking to string up some black dude. That don't even make sense. Wow. That 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 don't even make sense, man. This is this is common sense, no matter how much you like this dude. You gotta just use your common sense. Some of y'all ain't got none. I take that back. But <laughs> some of you got some common sense. Even the so, dudes, the Nigerian dudes, they said we we didn't. He paid us to do they it. They saying that he he paid. I them was paid to. to work maybe we give him. him maybe, he told me to do. Maybe we give him the benefit of the doubt if his if his trainers were not caught on video buying, surveillance yeah. buying the mask. The hat, mm -hmm. the rope. Right. Well, they have to buy it. I mean, that to me, that and doesn't the loose make. Loose was wrong. It was from right to left. But listen to what I'm saying. From left to right. <laughs> when were they? Where were they supposed to go to buy it? Where? Like, see, does see, that make a person? Not see, you, you the kind. No, you, I know kind. See, you the kind your friend can steal money from. Oh, right. man, see, you the kind that somebody can go saying. to your house. Your friend can go to your house and steal uh -huh. your money. Steal your money out of your house. Really? And then leave, and you gonna you gonna ask them, you gonna claim that uh, you gonna accuse them of stealing your money, and they are gonna say, how you know? How you gonna just tell me I did? How you gonna know I did? How you know I did? Well, don't saying. want nobody in the house but you and me. And then they are gonna keep on saying, then you gonna be like, well, maybe I misplaced it. <laughs> I I mean, it if ain't nobody in the house but right. me, and you ain't nobody been in this house but me and you, and my money come up missing. I didn't have to see you steal it. I don't need circumstantial evidence. I know you stole my money. Come on now. And you, and you Willie went, come up with my brain. Willie went pimp on her. Did you hear? I know you stole my money. Now I'm, I'm questioning everybody that has ever come in contact with me, especially when it comes to money. Now I'm thinking back. But look, so I guess you, in your mind, does he owe us an apology? He don't Does owe, he have to be held he, accountable? He don't, back to he, don't owe, he don't owe me nothing. He don't owe me nothing. He, he, owe me nothing. he, he owes Chicago in the pocket. He owe. He, he owe. Made Chicago <laughs> feel like they had people he owe, hating black people. He owe. He owe Chicago an apology. You know, he owe his family an apology. He owe people who support him an apology. He owes me nothing because I didn't even know his name until you know he got.